the tone curve this thing right here most people will tell you there's only one way to really use it which is this the S curve the classic S curve but I've been using it for two ways for as long as I can remember and I want to show you both those ways so let's crack into it all right, so for this example, we will be using Luminar Neo right here. Now, this is my editing software of choice, but if you use any other editing software, the tone curve adjustments that I'll be doing on this picture, you'll be able to use them in the other software that you use. Now, if you like what you see at the end of the video, there is a link down below for 10% off your purchase of Luminar Neo because it is an excellent program. And I've been using it for years, so I can personally vouch for it. Now. As you can see here, we have got a very, very flat looking image with a lot of potential. So I'm gonna be doing two edits on this image. We're gonna be doing one with a normal S-curve and then we're gonna be doing another one with the S-curve the other way around, which I'm gonna show you. So let's just have a look here. Now, this is where the S-curve is down here in Luminar Neo, which is normally hidden just up like this. So I just tend to have everything open just so I know where everything is and I'm good to go. Now here is the tone curve right here. So as you can see down below, they've got two adjustment points. The very, very bottom of this is your dark. So if I pull this all the way up, you can see that we lose a lot of contrast and also the histogram changes to show you where all the points of your image, like your contrast points are. So we can adjust that. If we go and click here, you can see that this controls the shadows. So anything past the first line of here is the shadows. This area here controls the highlights and adds contrast or removes contrast from the highlights. And then this one is your light. So if you pull this down, the image gets a lot darker. So basically, as you can see, the tone curve is the contrast adjuster. Now there is no specific way, you know, which way is the best way to do it. I tend to adjust on the curve, on the tone curve, that is, first and then from there go in to do my basic edits. Some people do it the other way around. This is just how I do it. So we're just gonna do a normal uh, S-curve right here just to show you, you know, what it will look like if you do adjust it. And as you can see, we already have got a significant amount of contrast coming back into the shot. So now that we've done that, we can go into the highlights, pull the highlights right down just to get the sky back, pull the shadows up, add in some contrast, and pull in some blacks. Now that's looking pretty good already. So we're just gonna go in here, close off that just to tell Luminar Neo that we are done. And then we're just gonna go in, remove some of these dust spots. Actually, I'll just press remove dust spots. It's probably easier. And then they're all done. So now we're just going to erase this little water marker here because I don't like it and I don't want it there anymore. <laughs> so I'm just gonna press erase and now it's gone. Now, we're just going to then get rid of that and we're just gonna go into the landscape just here and add in a little bit of dehaze, just like so, and pull in some golden hour back into the image. Now you can go ham, obviously, rip it all the way to the end and then it's gonna be very orange, but we don't want that. So we're just gonna go like that, a little bit of 10 foliage, 10 for golden hour. Now, this is all looking pretty good. It is looking quite dark though, but this is what you can do if you do just want to throw in an edit with a normal S-curve. So I'm just gonna go back into here, the shadows up just a little bit more, now we're looking good. So this is what you can expect if you do a standard S-curve for a normal picture with some high contrast points and some very low contrast points. Now, once we've done that, we're gonna go back in to the tool section and I'm gonna be showing you the other way to use the S-curve. Now, this is the inverted S-curve. So, not many people talk about this, but it is basically just pulling the high contrast points, which you can see is the dark areas of the image, and making them quite low contrast. So, we're just gonna do it like this, gonna pull it up and pull that in. So, now you can see it is looking a lot lower contrast, it's looking a lot flatter, but that's fine because now you can see that the histogram has become a lot more level and we are working with a lot more of an even color palette. So if we go here, we can then start modifying everything and pulling in contrast points, pull the blacks in like so, 
and pull in highlights. Now, not everyone likes doing it this way and I completely understand, but it does sort of allow you to recover a lot of the shadows that you can see here in the trees. So here we're going to go into the landscape and we're just going to go and do some dehazing as well. Golden hour and some foliage enhance. So we're going to get 15 and a 12. That looks quite nice. Now from here again, we're going to go do an erase. We're going to remove the dust spots and we're going to erase this little water marker just to keep it consistent. And then we're just going to get rid of that. We're going to go back into the develop tab and pull back some of the highlights as you can see it's a lot easier to now deal with the fact that we have got the trees now with a lot more detail because we have used the inverted s curve and we can just pull in the blacks a little bit just to give it some extra depth like so and we can already see that just here these really high contrast points have been able to be recovered a lot easier than doing it the other way with a standard S curve. Now you can go ham, you can spend all day just editing, editing all the colors and, and everything like that, but it's just, it's just sort of giving you a bit of an idea on how to use the S curve just with two different ways basically, just two different ways to use it because there is two ways, no one ever talks about the second way, the inverted S curve, but it is a great tool to use and it is, I think personally, I feel like it is underutilized and especially when you are pairing it with the power of Luminar Neo, you can pull out some incredible looking pictures just like this one right here. So, it's all looking pretty good. So this is what the picture looks like with an inverted S curve. So they are looking slightly different. We do see here on the right hand side that the inverted S curve does allow for a lot more of the shadows in the trees to be recovered whereas the other one has a much higher contrast looking shot. It's a little bit more moody, a little bit darker, a little bit more dramatic. So it purely depends on what you're looking to get out of your picture and really just learning to play with the tone curve to allow for creating that perfect image which whatever perfect is in your eyes that is what you can do with the tone curve. All right, I'm gonna let you decide which one you think is the best, but I hope this has helped, I hope this has helped. All right, let's go back outside and wrap this video up. All right, I've come to the end of the video. I really hope you've enjoyed it as much as I've enjoyed my mint tea. And if there's anything you wanna know that I haven't touched upon about the tone curve, do let me know down below because I will get back to you down there. Now, if you haven't already liked this video, that'd be a massive help just to help push this video out there to more and more people and if you haven't subscribed and you want to help me out you know what to do you know what to do all right i'll see you in the next video take care